Hello and welcome to New Zealand Post Lodgement Manager. In this video, we'll learn how to create a few different types of mail and parcel lodgements. First, let's go through the menu options in Lodgement Manager. Here, we're at the home page, having just logged in. On the My Profile tab, you can adjust settings for your user. On the Mail Orders tab, you can view mail orders that you've created. You can see the status of those mail orders and edit them if needed. Under the Organizations tab, you can see child users that you may have created on your account. On the Billing Accounts tab, you can see all of the billing accounts under your organization. Most users only have one, but this feature allows you to manage several different ones if needed. Finally, on the New Zealand Post Products page, you can view all of the available services that are loaded on your account. Let's go to Create a New Mail Order and run through the main function of the tool, Creating Mail Orders. You can click the link on the far left to get started. A mail order is comprised of a few different options. You must first choose a dispatch method, specify your mail order details, and then add products to the mail order. Choosing the dispatch method is first because it changes what information you need to provide. In this example, we'll use courier pickup as the dispatch method. Just note that choosing this option doesn't automatically book a courier collection. Now that we've selected courier pickup, the options change. First, select the account number you wish to use. In most cases, there's only one option and you can leave it at the default. Next, select the lodgement date. This is when the items should be lodged. By default, today's date is selected, and you can always click this link here to set it to today's date if you've changed it. Otherwise, if you click in the box, you'll get a calendar picker where you can choose the date you want. I'm going to leave it on today's date. Next, input a customer reference. This reference will apply to all items in the lodgement. The customer reference is a value that will appear on invoices and is a useful way to track and do invoice reconciliation on this particular lodgement. I'm just going to put in test. The next two fields, payment method and transport ID, should be left as default. There may be more payment methods added in future. The transport ID is a legacy field that is no longer used. However, it may be used again in future. Finally, the permit post number is mandatory for certain deliveries. You can leave it blank here and assign it individually to each product. Or, if you assign it here, it'll be applied to everything as default. I'm going to input mine now. Next, choose a product code. If you know the code, you can type it in and push enter. Or, if you click in the box and press enter, the dialog will appear on screen allowing you to choose the product family and product manually. Let's go through a few different examples. First, let's choose bulk letters as the product family, and then we'll choose LDPM as the product. This is a standard letter. Input a quantity. Different products have different minimum and maximum quantities. If you want to learn more about the minimum and maximum quantities of the product you're using, visit our website. I'll provide a link in this description below. Let's do a quantity of 300. As you can see, because I added my permit post number earlier, it now appears in this box for me. Invoice line reference 1 and invoice line reference 2 are values that will appear on invoices sent to you after the shipment is created. Again, this is another useful way to figure out which shipment these products belong to and do invoice reconciliation. The sender's note is for your reference. You can use it to add notes about this shipment. Finally, the contract agreement. You can place the contract agreement code in this field if you've negotiated one with your account manager. Your account manager will tell you what to put in this field if you have one. In most cases, you'll leave it blank. Now click save. And you'll see that the products are added to the lodgement. We can continue to add different products if desired. Simply repeat the process. Let's go through a few different products. Let's choose bulk letters again. And now we're going to choose volume post. This product has the same parameters as go flexible, print post, and add cards. Now we have a few different product loading mechanisms. If we choose quantity, as before, we simply provide the number of items. However, if we use a flat file, we can upload a file containing addresses and process the number of records in that file to get the quantity. Later on, I'll talk more about how to prepare the file for upload, but we'll get to that in just a moment. For this particular product, we'll need to choose an envelope size. The options available here are medium and large. These will vary based on the product you choose. Let's go for medium. And here we have to declare whether we have an SOA or not. SOA stands for Statement of Accuracy. 
A statement of accuracy is an electronic certificate showing the percentage of addresses in your address mailing list or database that are valid matches against the New Zealand Post postal address file. The postal address file is New Zealand Post's definitive file of New Zealand Postal addresses within our delivery network. It includes around 1.8 million delivery addresses and is an electronic file of data which can be licensed directly from New Zealand Post. Having an 80% or higher accuracy rate for your customer addresses means that New Zealand Post can deliver your mail efficiently and accurately. It also reduces costs to your business for things like return mail. I'll put a link in the description below where you can learn more about the statement of accuracy, but for now, if you don't have one, simply tick the option. If you do have one, you'll input the SOA ID that you have in this field here. Now you must choose the bulk mail transaction type. There are a few different options. The default is transactional. This is non-discretionary mail items such as statements, invoices, receipts, or payment advice. Enhanced stands for enhanced transactional. That's the same as transactional, except it also includes another item like a brochure or promotional insert. Solus is a direct mail item sent on its own with or without inserts. Finally, you can use the magazine transaction type for any type of magazine, periodical, or publication. Let's go for transactional. As before, the invoice lines can be filled out if you want additional references to appear on your invoice and reporting, and your contract agreement code can go here. You can download a template for the lodgement distribution file here if you're setting it up for the first time. I've got one that I've set up already, so I'm simply going to choose Choose Files, select my file, and choose Upload. My file has a lot of records in it, so it may take some time to upload. As you can see, my file has been broken up depending on the region where the items are being delivered. 3,416 are going to Zone A. That's what Z and A stand for, and so on. Now to complete the lodgement. We can choose Save to save the lodgement. This is useful if you need to leave and work on the order later. When providing mail or items to be delivered as a mail order, you must also include a statement of posting. You can generate the statement of posting here by clicking this button. Here's an example. It's essentially a summary of what you saw on the previous page, listing all the product codes in use and the quantity. You can also download your address distribution file if needed. This will tell you the results of your address upload, such as if addresses were correctly validated, which ones failed, and the zones they've been assigned to. To do that, just click this here. If I want to find the mail order I was working on, I can go back to the Mail Orders tab and open it. When you're ready to submit the mail order, simply click the Submit button. Now that we've gone through all of that, let's go back to Excel and have a look at the example file that I uploaded. Let's start on the left and work our way through each column. The record number column is pretty straightforward. Each row in the file should have its own number. Normally this is an ascending number. If you're creating this file for the first time, be sure to make use of Excel's autofill feature. Simply type in the first number, drag the handle, and then choose Fill Series, and it'll number it all the way down in an ascending fashion. The next column is Address 1. This column can be used for the receiver's name or company name, or left blank. The next few address fields are freeform. In most cases, the street address will be in address 2, the suburb will be in address 3, and so on. However, you may have addresses that have more fields than that. You may also want to include a business name if you used a receiver name in address 1. Address 6 should always be the city or town. This field is also mandatory, so you must include this. Postcode is also mandatory and should be filled with a 3 or 4 digit number postcode. Lastly, the count field. At this stage, this always needs to contain a 1. You can include extra fields if desired, if for example you've exported this from another tool, but just bear in mind that Lodgement Manager will simply ignore any additional columns. I strongly suggest making sure that your addresses include a good street name and number, and a suburb, to ensure that address validation works successfully. So that about wraps up this quick tutorial on Lodgement Manager. I hope you found it useful.